okay let's we can go to r1 router just i will give single ping to 5.5.5.5 so just i will ping 5.5.5 repeat only one packet i can ping so i can get reply so now we can go to r1 to r2 so let's we can check so each and every interface i will manually assign the mac address for an example if it's r1 router gigabit 1/0 means this interface i will assign the mac address as 40000.1111.1111 here 22222222 here 22222222 so for we can easily identify which interface the packet will be capturing so for the purpose only each and every port i will assign mac address for an example r1 router means i will assign the mac address as 000.111.111 and if it's r2 router means i can assign the mac address as 000.222.222 okay next r3 router the mac address i can assign as .33 not double three so it's common for all the interface for r3 router if it's r4 means i will assign the mac address as 40.4444 and if it's r5 router i can assign the mac address as 555.555 okay so let's we can before that we can stop that capture i can already assign the mac address to all the interface just we can stop the capture <coughs> okay so i already ping from r1 to r5 only one packet let's we can check it so first of all we can go to r1 router so this is an r1 router here we can see the mac address in layer 2 information it will be showing 000111 so this is an r1 to <coughs> r1 to r2 so here just i will give icmp <coughs> enter here we can see <coughs> so this is the ping request and ping reply so this packet can be captured from r1 router to r2 router so this interface If we can capture that packet so just we can go to th this packet so this is the source information so r1 we can just give ping 5.5.5.5 so this is the source ip 10.10.10.1 that is r1 physical interface gigabyte 1/0 physical ip address is 10.10.10.1 and r5 loopback address is 5.5.5 this is a destination ip so we can know the destination ip but in r1 router does not know does not know this ip so in real device so in real time all the devices are communicating through mac address instead of physical inter, instead of ip address it will be communicating through mac address so the ip address is only for human beings understanding purpose only we can assign the ip address so normally the routers which just can communicating through mac address only so in r1 router just we can give 5.5.5.5 so the source ip we can know so this physical interface is an so this gigabyte 1/0 we can assign the ip address as 10.10.10.1 so this is the source ip and destination ip we can know we can give 5.5.5 so now r1 router knows the source ip sorry source mac address so the source mac address is gigabyte 1/0 i can assign the mac address manually as 000.111.1111 so it does not know the mac address of 5555 so now the packet will be so first of all layer 2 information so it will check the layer 2 information <coughs> so layer 2 information so the physical mac address for r1 router we can know so the destination mac address we does not know so it will be encapsulate that packet de encapsulate that packet 
first of all layer 2 information then layer 3 information so it will check the layer 3 information here the layer 3 information is 10.10.10.1 and destination ip is 5.5.5.5 so then immediately the r1 router it will check its routing table so it will goes to routing table show ip route here we can see the 5.5.5 can be learned through 10.10.10.2 via gigabyte 1 slash 0 so through this port it can learn this 5.5.5 network that means 10.10.10.2 is an this gigabyte 1 slash 0 so through this port only it can learn 5.5.5.5 so automatically in layer 2 the MAC address, destination MAC address should be an gigabyte 1 slash 0 that is 000.222.222 so here you can see source MAC address is an 111 000.111 and destination MAC address so this is an here <coughs> this frame indicates overview of this packet and this is an layer 2 information ethernet 2 so this is an layer 2 information so the layer 2 information is a MAC address and layer 3 information is an IP version 4 address. <coughs> so the source MAC address is <coughs> and destination MAC address we does not know the destination MAC address. So it will be decapsulate the packet and check the layer 3 information. So the layer 3 information the destination IP should be an 5.5.5.5. So it automatically checks its routing table. So just give show IP route in R1 router. The 5.5.5 network can be learned through 10.10.10.2. So this is the next to hop. So through this port only it can learn this network. So the next to hop should be in 10.10.2. So the 10.10.10.2 is in this port. So automatically the packet will be sent to R2 router. Again in R2 router, again the packet will be decapsulated. It will check the layer 2 information, then layer 3 information. So in layer 3 information, the destination IP should be in 5.5.5. So again the R2 router, it will check its routing table. So go to R2 router and it will check its routing table. Show IP route. <coughs> Here we can see, <coughs> sorry. So the 5.5.5 network can be learned through 20.20.20.2 through gigabyte 2 slash 0. So through this port only it will be learned. So the 20.20.2 can be assigned. So this physical this physical interface IP is 20.20.20.2. So automatically the packet the source MAC address should be a 0.0.0.2.2.2.2 and 2.2.2 and the destination MAC should be a this physical interface MAC that is. 0003333333 and it will send to R3 router. Again in R3 router the packet will be decapsulated layer 2 and layer 3 and it will check its routing table and send to R3 R4 router and R4 router again it will check its routing table and it will forward the packet to R5. So likewise the packet will be forwarding based on IP version 4. So for an example in R3 router it will receive the millions of packets. So each and every packet it will be decapsulated and it will check the layer 2 information and layer 3 information and check its routing table and the forward the packet. So it will take some delay. So if you are using MPLS it will increase the quality of service. It will not check the layer 